surface tension, surface excess. The objective of this experiment is to determine the surface excess. All right, how do I determine the surface excess? Well, we look at the lab manual and we're told that the derivative of the surface tension gamma with respect to the log, natural log of the activity of ethanol A2 is equal to minus RT gamma two. Gamma two is the surface excess of ethanol. And that's what we want to determine. Okay, so if we're going to do that, let's do the algebra there. We can determine the surface excess from minus one over minus, don't forget that, um, that negative sign there, RT, make sure temperature is in Kelvin, R in the usual way, 0.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. And the gamma here, the derivative, we want to make sure that's in newtons per meter, right? Not millinewtons per meter. All right, but we need to get the activity. What is activity equal to? Oh, the activity of ethanol, A2, is equal to the activity coefficient of ethanol times the mole fraction. We know the mole fraction because we know the mass of ethanol and we know the total mass. So we can work out the mole fraction from that. But what about the activity coefficient? Well, if we go to the literature, we'll see that the ethanol activity coefficient changes with the mole fraction of ethanol. Oh, okay. But what's nice is that's a, just a smooth curve and it fits really well. I'm not sure why, but it fits really well to this double exponential with these coefficients, those you're given. So now knowing the mole fraction X2, you can just substitute into this equation and determine the activity coefficient X2. Okay, wonderful. So we need to determine the derivative of surface tension versus the natural log of A2. How are we gonna do that? Oh, the derivative is a slope. That is if we plot surface tension of the, the mixture versus the natural log of ethanol, uh, natural log of the activity of ethanol, we see, oh, a nice smooth curve. And in fact, you're told you should fit a third order polynomial to this data. That is the surface tension is equal to a third order polynomial in the natural log of the activity of ethanol, LNA2. So we've got four coefficients. K0 is the zeroth order term. K1 is the first order term, right? First order in LN2. Then we've got the quadratic term. K2 is the coefficient there. And the third order term, right? K3. We determine all those three. But we don't need that function. We need the derivative. Polynomials are great. It's easy to take the derivative. We can do that analytically. Let's take the derivative with respect to LNA2. Oh, the K0 term goes away. That highlights the, an advantage of using derivatives from experimental data because if we had a constant offset K0, it wouldn't affect the quality of our results. And these three terms then, K1, K2, K3, are all determined by a fit to the surface tension versus natural log of the activity of ethanol from that curve up above the fitted line and our fit to that gives us those three coefficients so that we can analytically determine the value of the derivative for each value of mole fraction and activity and determine what the shape of the gamma two, the surface excess versus mole fraction curve is. And then by determining the surface excess, we'll see if it's a positive or negative number and whether ethanol is indeed enriched in concentration at the surface.